products. I just want to go over a couple things. Some breadcrumbs on uh, the EV industry in Lordstown. Uh, Lordstown today announced that we'll release will release its third quarter financial results after market close on November 11th, 2021. The company will then host a conference call at 4.30 Eastern Time. Okay, so everybody knows November 11 and uh, 4.30 Eastern Time. That is going to be the big Foxconn reveal on what the agreement is with Foxconn and the sale of the GM plant, the Lordstown plant, former GM Lordstown plant. So that's a date to remember. Now let's just move on here. Uh, these Foxconn EVs might be closer tied to Lordstown than Apple. Um, what they're saying here is that, um, uh, and by the way, I have a picture of this Model E sedan, which... Uh, Foxconn is going to build and what they're implying here is that um, they're gonna uh, they're gonna make these cars at Lordstown um, or some of these cars at Lordstown so uh, what my research has come up with is uh, Foxconn intends to purchase Lords, uh, to produce, here we go, it seems Foxconn intends to produce Lord Motors EV, but also other, another VV as, as well, and it is unclear whether this model will be the sedan concept as shown. Now, it could be the pair, uh, the Fisker pair, or it could be this, uh, Model E, uh, from Foxconn, along with the endurance that they're going to produce at uh, the Lordstown, Ohio plant. I have seen um, two different views of this. One view said that this plant is going to be uh, making three EVs when it's up and running. Uh, and by the way, this plant is totally capable of building three different ICE cars at the same time. So that is not a stretch for this plant to build three models at one time. Uh, this particular report says two models and they're implying here that it's the Foxtron Model E uh, along with the uh, Lordstown Motors Endurance um, that will be uh, built at the plant. And um, it's not clear if the Foxconn concepts will lead to the new Apple car. It, my stand, uh, I thought the Faraday Future was going to be uh, the Apple car. Uh, Kirsten Brickfeld of Faraday Future made some um, implications of this. Uh, but he also said that in the future, the self-driving computer will be removable, upgradable, and replaceable in the car, and that the operating system, the self-driving operating system, uh, will be the same along with the computer. So uh, he's implying that uh, they're building uh, the base with the sensors and everything that's needed for self-driving, and that uh, there will be a plug-and-play self-driving component. And uh, he implied a relationship with Apple, or maybe he didn't. you got to watch the interviews. But he's saying that, he's implying that that's going to be the model that's going to be followed, and that may be the Apple car, but they say that Apple's hiring a lot of engineers to build a mechanical vehicle, but it may be a virtual uh, vehicle. Uh, virtual self-driving uh, uh, appliance they're building. Anyway, um, so it, it, it does appear as though Foxconn, I mean, there's all kind of, we're, we're going to know on the uh, conference call, but um, uh, again, Foxconn is going to build more than one model at Lordstown. When that will ramp up to to happen, we don't know. 
they want to work rapidly. We're going to find out on this conference call. Of course, you know, the assembly line now is based on these carts that move around independently. So, you know, programming in a second or third model is not a big deal. And again, Fisker is uh, is saying the pair there's there's implications the pair their their thirty five thousand dollar model is going to be built there it, they are a client of foxconn as well uh we're going to have to wait for the conference call but uh i just thought that was an interesting uh, blip there to come up with now uh Back in the day, before the internet and everything, one of the things marketing people used to do to find uh, areas of growth is they would analyze uh, utility uh, data. And wherever there were spikes in utility usage, uh, they would map that out and find out that, that that was a growth area in a town, in a state, in a city, wherever. And they would target marketing using that metric. Anyway, uh, just interesting here, Lordstown, and this is October 29th, so this is very recent, is uh, undergoing uh, a big, uh, a big improvement to their uh, utility, the amount of electricity that is going to be going to the Lordstown complex. Um, and uh, the work we're doing in Lordstown will help meet the future energy demands of the rapidly growing electric vehicle industry. And uh, now, of course, we have the GM Ultimum uh, battery plant there, but we also have, uh, here's the Ultium cells, a, a, so uh, you can see we've got a $32 million investment here by this utility in this area. Uh, Ultima sells alone, a thousand dollar, a thousand jobs to the area. So that's the GM battery plant. And also uh, in this same complex, uh, I'm sure with this same uh, 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 electric supply is Lordstown Motors and uh, so this is a hint saying that um, now this uh, Ultium cell plant has been being built and on the drawing board for quite a time this is a, quite a long time this is a, a recent article you can imply from that that um, the growing electric car industry but you can imply from this that uh, Lordstown, the Lordstown Motors plant is going to need, you know, they, they may be working on the plant right now, upgrading it for Foxconn. Schmidt may be. And, but, but in any case, the point is, uh, this is a positive uh, for that complex, the fact that they need more power, okay? And they've actually increased the 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 spending on that power supply uh you know they've invested 12 million over top to 20 million they already did and this is just to supply a substation and a special line going into uh the lord sound complex and read into it what you may uh is it all for the ultium power plant or is it part of it for lordstown they're both probably going to share in this but it's it's a positive in any event i choose to see this as um lordstown motors uh requiring um part of this as well i believe they may have already planned for the ultium cells plant uh, because this been in in the works for uh, a year or two i think the power supply was already there i'm reading between the lines here that this is this is additional power uh, that's going to be supplied to the complex, but that uh, they're going to need at Lordstown Motors production line. So I think this is a very positive breadcrumb. Uh, and uh, again, we're going to have to wait for the uh, conference call on this, the earnings call. And I just wanted to, this is the Foxtron Model E sedan. Uh, I believe Pinaf Pinaferina designed this body. 
I think it's a pretty attractive car. I think Tesla better, <laughs> better look out. And um, let's see if we can get a picture of the interior. How about that interior? Isn't that nice? So, um, this is one of Fox Tron. This is going to be their first offering, I believe. And there's some scuttlebutt that this is going to be built at Lordstown. Um, now, Cadillac did use uh, to build the Elante. They had Pinaferina actually build the unibody, the body of the car, and the interior in, in, in well, the body of the car in, in uh, Italy, and then they would ship the entire body and assemble the car at plants in, um, in America. I don't know if uh, Foxtron is going to be building this body or if they're going to be using the same concept here, but Pinaferina has designed this car. I think it's a great looking car. It actually looks a little different from all the other <laughs> EVs. But again, uh, here's the interior. And um, uh, there's a shot of a screen in the back seat. So there's some uh, pretty interesting uh, things going on here with this car. And this, again, may be built at Lordstown. Um, or it may not. We don't know. We're going to find out what the earnings call is going to bring. I think uh, I think there's some pretty good pictures here. That's a pretty great picture of the Foxtron Model E. And again, this may be built at the Lordstown plant alongside the Endurance. Not a problem. Three models could easily be built at that plant. And uh, it's just interesting to look at these... Uh, new car models perhaps this is the best picture now as uh, just want to bring up one other topic here it just was announced that Amazon with the public offering of um, Rivian coming up they've announced that they have a 20 percent stake uh, uh, Am uh, Amazon has a 20 percent approximately 20 percent ownership interest and a carrying value of 3.8 billion. Okay, and this is in Rivian. So Rivian is swimming in cash. By the way, uh, one of the things that just happened at Rivian was they had a fire at their manufacturing facility in their battery facility inside that plant where they're assembling batteries. And I do believe Rivian uses a pouch battery and I do believe the Ford Lightning is going to use a pouch battery as well. And Elon Musk has said uh, that these are not reliable. Well, he prefers, uh, obviously, the uh, the cell, uh, the solid cell, uh, uh, aluminum or whatever, um, battery-looking cell versus the pouch. And by the way, the bolts that all burn down in the driveways, uh, the GM cars, they had pouch batteries too. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Amazon owning a 20% stake in Rivian. Now, when you think about this, it's inside baseball. They're going to build their vans for them. They're going to, uh, you know, they've ordered 100,000 vans for them. Why shouldn't they own part of the company? You know, it's like taking money out of one pocket and putting it in another pocket. But uh, I think that what Amazon really is doing here, and, and this is what they did, with the Amazon Web Services. They caught on to this before anyone else. And I think this is important, uh, something we should all look at with the earnings call for um, the uh, endurance for Lordstown Motors. And that is carbon credits. Um, I think that's why Amazon bought uh, a 20% stake in Rivian. And I think that um, everybody's uh, overlooking these carbon, carbon credits. You know, the, uh, this article is rather lengthy. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, this is something we should note with the Lordstown call. Where are the carbon credits going? We already know that uh, GM has a, a deal to buy a certain percentage uh, of the carbon credits at a certain discount. 
but the the point I'm trying to make here, besides that, is what we need to know. You know, um, I think uh, Lordstown is going to maintain because they're they're hiring someone to build the car, but it's still their car and they're paying for it, so they're going to keep the carbon credits. I'm pretty sure we'll hear from the deal from the conference call. But the point is, um, with these carbon credits. You know, companies are seeking off offset green greenhouse gas uh, with carbon credits, and they have U.S. steel here. Uh, but but the big thing with this is that um, um, a carbon credit is you know, Elon Musk has been using these to to run uh, Tesla for years, and they make up a large part of the income at Tesla. Uh, but uh, it's a credit for a ton, one ton of carbon. When you produce a, an EV, you produce a carbon credit or a percentage of a carbon credit, whatever it may be, and then that can be sold to another party. And that party can use that carbon credit to offset their lack of production of an EV. So, example, for example, when Fiat was not producing any electric vehicles, uh, they were buying carbon credits from uh, Tesla to offset that. And uh, there's other American manufacturers that have been doing the same. The point I'm trying to make here is the compliance market for carbon. Uh, these these credits are going to be traded to uh, uh, meet compliance regulations, EPA re regulations. This this market is going to boom. Okay. Um, the voluntary market on track to reach 66.7 billion at the end of 21. Okay, uh, carbon uh, compliance market project carbon prices to increase 88 percent. Okay, uh, by uh, 2030. So um, the point is, with the Paris Climate Accords, um, the thing is. Right now, the U.S. has got like an internal market, and this is still in the cradle in the United States with the Paris Agreement. They're talking about a, a, a worldwide, uh, this is highly unregulated at the moment. It's not regulated in the United States, I don't think, by anyone. But, but the point is, they're talking about putting in a worldwide cap-and-trade uh, carbon credit market. And this is going to turn these carbon credits into a big commodity. And I think this is one of the hidden values of Lordstown as well, because they're going to be producing these uh, carbon credits with each unit they build. And as you, as you saw from that statistic, they're expecting it to go up 88% by 2030. I think that's low. I think once the Paris Accords uh, unify uh, an international market for cap and trade, cap and trade means every company has a cap on how much carbon they can put out, and if they meet that and they have leftover credits, they can trade those credits. Uh, but anyway, I think uh, how fighting uh, climate change became a billion dollar industry. I think this is the main reason that uh, Amazon has got a 20% stake in Rivian. They want to be in on this credit. Uh, this is going to be, this might be bigger than anything coming up, okay? Depending on how the Paris Accords uh, work out and what rules uh, and how the uh, U.S. formulates, this is all like cryptocurrency right now. But anyway, uh, I just thought that was interesting, and I, and I do believe that, much like uh, Amazon jumped the gun with Amazon Web Services over everyone else, I think they've recognized this uh, carbon market. Anyway, uh, I thought that was an interesting uh, takeaway. And, and the idea that Lordstown is going to be a producer of these carbon credits, that may be something that people are overlooking and something we, we need to pay attention to in the conference call. Anyway, guys, that's it. Again, the conference call is November 11th, uh, 2021, after the market closes, 4.30 Eastern Time. Okay, uh, this is MXUX. Thanks, guys, and uh, 
moving on to the next uh, video.